next one. So look ahead at the next problem. Got a three kilogram disc D attached to the end of the cord, end of the cord as shown in the figure. The other end of the cord is attached to a ball and socket joint at the middle. So what's happening is this platform is rotating rapidly and then we put the, the disc D, we set it on top of this spinning platform. So it's not there initially. This platform is spinning and we place disc D on it. So what do you think will happen? Uh, disc D will start, will start to kind of go around the platform, right? <laughs> um, so we want to find, so if the platform rotates rapidly and the disc is placed on it and released from rest, and then we let go, uh, determine the time it takes for the disc. The disc will start going around and around to reach a speed great enough to break the cord. The maximum tension the cord can sustain, 100 newtons, it's almost a mechanics uh, type of problem. Then the coefficient of kinetic friction between the disc and the platform is 0.1. UK is 0.1. Okay, that was a lot. And, and you know, sometimes I think it's okay if you're not exactly sure how we're gonna get there, right? But fall back on what you do know. I'm gonna draw the free body diagram of that disc D, right? We're given its mass, three kilograms. Uh, if you know the mass of something, then you, you can and you probably should draw its free body diagram. So let us draw this disc D right here and think about what forces are acting on it as it's placed there and it starts to spin. Uh, so first, the weight, three times 9.8, one, pointed straight down. Then the normal force in, right? And then the tension T in the cable. And then, and, and, you know, you're given a mu K, then there's friction. You know that, that there's slip, slip, it's slipping past each other, and you're only given mu K. Uh, so I know the force of friction is mu K in, uh, but think about its direction. If I'm drawing it right here, if I'm drawing it right here, the force of friction is in the direction of the slippage, kind of. Uh, and so my only question is, is it that way or that way? All right. Is it that way or that way? Well, I think, think about it a few different ways. It's almost like a tablecloth getting pulled out from under the disc. So you kind of think about our tablecloth problems. It opposes the motion, but it opposes the relative motion between the two. You see that if, if this platform is spinning relatively, the disc kind of wants to kind of go backwards relative to the platform. Um, and so that's the force of friction will be in this direction right here. Um, but also you could, you could draw this force of friction. And I think when you get to your equations, you might notice if you drew it the wrong direction. Okay. So anyway, that, that's the force of friction. It's in that direction. If you drew, if you guess the wrong way, we'll, we'll see in a couple of steps, maybe you will realize it. All right. Maybe you'll realize it. Um, I think that's a good free body diagram. It needs axes though. Let's start with normal. Let's start with normal. I'd say the normal direction is right there where the tension in the rope is. So that's the normal direction. What direction is tangential? So that's my tangential direction. And I'd call that straight up Z. Now, I, I kind of drew this free body diagram when the puck is at this location. But do you see that because I've defined these as normal and tangential axes, the normal and tangential axes are, are going to follow. So anyway, this free body diagram is true everywhere. 
isn't the tension always going to be pointed in the normal direction? You know, even as it's going around, even when it's over here, the normal tension will still be in the normal direction. The weight will still be straight down and will still be straight up. The force of friction will still be in the tangential direction because the slipping, you know, is, is occurring in the tangential direction. So, you know, I tell you to, to draw your free body diagrams as if they would be true everywhere. And so that's, that's why we draw these normal and tangential because that makes these forces true according to these axes everywhere. Okay, so we've drawn our free body diagram to find our axes. Now let's sum the forces. Sum the forces in the normal direction equals T. And that's it, and that's fine. Equals, so sum of the forces equals mass times A normal. What is A normal? V squared over rho. Uh, rho is a constant one the whole time. V though is, is changing, starts from rest at zero. It starts speeding up. Um, so there's, there's an equation we can use now or later. You know, we'll, let's, let's keep it in our back pocket for now. Let's sum the forces. Um, I might should start with some of the forces in Z real quick, because I think some of the forces in Z, that's going to lead me to my N. Uh, summing the forces in Z. N minus 3, 9.81 equals mass times acceleration in the Z. Is it accelerating in the Z? You know, it's not digging down into the platform. It's not flying, elevating off the platform. Uh, so this is zero. So N is 29.43. Sometimes it's helpful to just do that direction first. And let's sum the forces tangential. Force of friction, so UK times 29.43. All right, I drew it in this direction. And I think I would see here that it is accelerating in that direction. So in this case, I know the acceleration, I know it's moving in the tangential direction. So it makes sense that the force would also be in the direction, right? For, that force causes the acceleration. So here we have acceleration. All right, there, there's only one unknown. Let me solve for that. Acceleration 0.981 meters per second squared. All right. And I just did that because I knew I could do that. Now let me take a step back and go back to the problem and just let's just figure out okay, where are we going? What is it asking for? And how are we going to use these equations to get there? All right. Where are we going? What's it asking for? Determine the time it takes to reach the speed. Time is not even in any of these three equations. So we've got to think, think outside the box, figure out how to fake that. We need to determine the time it takes for the disc to reach a speed great enough to break the cord. And the cord will break when T is equal to 100. All right, so I know that when T is equal to 100, it'll break. I've got this equation that has T in it. Uh, so how about, how about I figure out what velocity equals that would get T to up to 100, <laughs> that would get the tension up to 100? And does it kind of make sense, this equation for normal direction? <laughs> when it wasn't moving, there was no tension in the cord. Right? Does this make sense of something that's spinning around in a circle that has tension? If it's not moving, there's no tension. But as, as it's spinning... Right, that cord needs to be stronger and stronger and stronger. Uh, so, so anyway, I can find, I'm not going to answer the question just yet, determine the time it takes, but I think I'm going to find the velocity that it takes to get a tension of 100, to break the cord. So from plugging in 100, I'd get, I need a velocity of 5.77 meters per second. Okay. So let's determine the time it takes to get to this final velocity of 5.77 if what do I know maybe I can use that if you know the acceleration and you know it started from rest and you know the final velocity you want to know the time it takes to get to that final velocity 
can we use constant acceleration equation? That's my first hope in many of these problems. My first hope, my first instinct is maybe I can use constant acceleration equation to, to find that. Is this constant? Well, where did it come from? It came from this equation. Does that equation change? That three doesn't change. Does, does this, once it's slipping, so as long as it is still slipping, then mu k is, is, that, is that constant. I mean, force friction, this is the constant mu k in. So it, yeah, it's still 0.1. Oh, how about that n? Let me go back to see, does that n change? Well, that n came from that equation. Did that change? No. So go back to where you got your acceleration from. And if there are any thetas that are changing, if there's, you know, things that are changing, then you can't use constant acceleration. Sometimes you can. So if we have, here's a, here's a real problem. If you have a constant acceleration of 0.981 starting from rest, what time does it take you to get the final velocity of 5.77? So you see how we had to do all that work just to get that sentence that we had done, you know, first, second week of class. So any of those three constant acceleration equations uh, we could use. How about this one, Vf equals Vi plus At. So 5.77 started from rest, 0.981 T. So what time? 5.89 seconds. 5.89 seconds. So look at what we did, because we're going to do this a lot. We needed to use the acceleration from the tangential part of the problem in order to get the, in order to kind of use it with the velocity in the normal part of the problem. Uh, didn't we do that with some of the, the problems for test one, we did normal tangential. You know, we'd say we'd separate. I like to separate normal from tangential, but sometimes you need to use the tangential acceleration in order to get the velocity, you know, kind of use tangential to get some information for the normal part of your problem. All right, let's look at another one. 